heart pounding, oh, yeah. drenched in sweat, you got this. and no excuses. These are the greatest workouts in America. We as humans are far more capable than we believe. No matter the odds. Think about the end result. Get out there and get going. We're gonna start with 45 minutes. This is Pumped. First stop, New York City. The table is a great equalizer. Short, tall, big, skinny, young or old, it doesn't matter. The table is a great way to level the playing field. There is competitive air hockey in the world. Yeah! <laughs> Woo! How many masters are there in New York City? Just one, you're looking at them. <laughs> The college I went to back in Houston actually was the birthplace of competitive air hockey. I had the opportunity to take photos at a world championship. I thought it's kind of seemed like whatever I did as a kid. Turns out there's a lot more to it. I was very eager to learn. There's different skill levels. You kind of work your way up from beginner, amateur, pro. When you make a top 10 finish at a national or world tournament, your title is a master. We understand there was a big tournament back mm -hmm. in July. What happened there? Flew out to Colorado Springs to play in the AHPA World Championship and was able to finish top 10 again. I actually got the master rank of number eight in the world. Eight in the world? Correct, yeah. Do you ever hustle guys at the arcade, act like you've never played? How do you use this thing? What is this, a mallet? <laughs> at this point, you know, if somebody comes and sees me on the table, they probably know I mean business. <laughs> <laughs> As we take a look at this table, uh, are you Picasso and this is your canvas? Is this the best way to put that? <laughs> that is a great way to put it. Um, so we have certain tables that we play on for uh, regulation. Eight foot, non-painted rails. So this is your mallet. I'd imagine this is pretty special. So yeah, as far as air hockey goes, this is everything right here. Can I hold it? Yeah, absolutely. What the f man, come on. All right, let's get down to the reason why we are here. We understand you have an outstanding bet to all comers. What is that bet? Uh, it's basically that if you can beat me in a game of air hockey, I'll buy you a beer. And how many beers have you bought? I have not bought a beer yet. That's going to change today. Are we going to do this? We're going to do this. I just need a second to get ready. Really? It's air hockey. Get ready to buy me that beer. Heck with this. All right, it's time to get serious. First one to seven, is that the rule? First to seven. Zero, zero, away we go. Now, is there a certain strategy involved here? Lots of Obviously, it. Obviously, to score, like that. You can kind of deceive and get ready to shoot and do like that. Aha! All right, desperate times call for desperate measures. Let's go. What you know about this? Yeah! So tough now, are you, Master? All right, here we go. Match point. Ready? Yep. I see you, I see you. Come on, Mr. Master. Well, that was fun, dude. These are on you, right? That wasn't the bet, man. All right, I'd like to start a tab. No problem. What's the name? Ritter. Ritter. Bill. So now the student has become the master. Mm, that's not what happened. That's pretty much what happened. No. Yeah, no, no, no. Yep. That's, that's how I saw it. Nope. It's, it feels good to be a master. It's not I'm a master. I'm going to call myself Grand Master. Not a master. Yeah, it's got a great ring to it. Only one master here. No, no, I'm the master. Nope. Can't wait to tell all my friends I'm a Grand Master air hockey player. You'll be lying. We're headed to Chicago. Ready, go! Running keeps me young. Give me an attract, give me a lakefront path, and I'm home again. 
you know, I'm not as fast as I used to be, but the fact is, you know, one step forward and just keep at it. Rule number one of Run Club, we tell everyone about Run Club. I have Parkinson's, but I choose not to be defined as by my Parkinson's. Parkinson's is, is actually a bully. It, it slowly robs you of your ability to speak, to eat, to swallow, to move. And the way to beat a bully is to stand up and fight. Just because you have a diagnosis of Parkinson's doesn't mean you, you have to give up. On three, beat Parkinson's. One, two, three, beat, beat Parkinson's! Parkinson's! Great job today, guys. Thanks for coming out. So in 2015, I signed up for my fourth Ironman, and I set a lofty goal. And I knew I didn't know enough to do this on my own, so I went out and found and hired a professional Ironman coach. And we went for a run, and inside of literally 10 yards, he stopped me dead in my tracks and said, hold on, Chris, what's, what's wrong with your right leg? And he peppered me with questions, and I dodged it for a little, and ultimately he made me you know, face up to the reality that not only was there an issue with the right side of my right, my right leg, but the entire right side of my body. Parkinson's disease is a neurodegenerative disease, uh, meaning certain areas of the brain are deteriorating. The hallmark of Parkinson's disease is a loss of dopamine, and with that comes motor dysfunction, and so kind of the hallmark physical symptoms are tremors, uh, stiffness, slow movements, slower to move through the day, trouble with dexterity. He said there's no cure for the disease, there's no medication that will stop or slow the progression of the disease, but the one thing that is clinically proven to be able to mitigate the severity of symptoms and, and slow the progression of the disease is rigorous daily exercise. I wake up some mornings, I stiff, I don't want to get out of bed. I think of these guys and I know that Chris is out there running somewhere, or Jim's out there running somewhere. That's in my head, and I pull myself out of bed, and that first step is hard, the second step's better, and then I'm out there running, and I'm like, I just feel great. I came up with this mantra, and the mantra is simply this, BEAT Parkinson's. And BEAT is an acronym which stands for Be Extremely Active Today. Because by being extremely active today, you give yourself the best possible chance for tomorrow. You know, there's one side we all have in common is a clinical side, and that's from the doctor's perspective and the, and the, and the, the researchers and so on. But this is the people side of things, and you know, it's, uh, it's supporting each other without judging. We're all in this together, and the more we support each other, the, the better it will be for all in the long term. We all are fighting a common cause, and uh, you know, each of us has our own struggles and our own challenges, but each of us is fighting Parkinson's in our own way and, and working to beat it. Those guys inspire me, and, and hopefully that's infectious, that's contagious, that gets other people to stand up and fight as well. And when we do that, there's, there's hope. It's workout time. I've got my headband on and ready, and I'm outside in aerial fitness class. Let's see what this is all about. As long as you're willing to try something a few times and be uncomfortable um, and sort of feel out of control a little bit in a, in a new way, um, then, you know, let yourself go and just have a good time with it. You did it! What's happening? You're upside down! Oh my! So tell me a little bit about aerial fitness. What is it? Yeah, absolutely. So air aerial fitness is a combination of a couple different fitness methodologies um, using the silk hammocks for body weight exercises primarily. Um, you might come to class and see some elements of bar, some elements of Pilates and strength training, um, definitely some cardio and all the core. There's definitely a variety of core exercises that we will take you through that are um, specifically designed to work with the hammock, but the hammock itself is unstable, causing you to use your core for almost everything, whether you want to or not. With a lot of workouts, it's hard to kind of see results or to, or to feel results. With this, I, what I've been hearing is you, the next few days, you're like, hey, I got some muscle here. Yeah. I, I see this, yeah. I've had clients who tell me they feel stronger within three classes. Um, a lot of things that we're doing are targeting muscles that you may not use in everyday life, including like hands and forearms and that kind of thing. Um, so using the hammocks really allows you to build up some strength quickly. On the silks, it's like you have this whole other way of like kind of micro muscles that you're having to sort of negotiate holding your body in place and, and all the different movements. So it's been a fun and like totally new challenge for me. And it's a good workout. Um, they don't think you do all this lifting and tone up until they see my body. They're like, do like, you lift? I'm like, kind in class. And then they see all these poses and 
you're just shocked like all, all, the, all the results. As long as you're willing to try something a few times and be uncomfortable um, and sort of feel out of control a little bit in a, in a new way, um, then you know, let yourself go and just have a good time with it. Coming up. When I woke up at 2 a.m. in ICU, the first thing the nurse said is, oh good, you're awake. We want to tell you that you're four weeks pregnant. And later. Bringing in the different trainers, different ideas for classes, creates a space where you can try just about anything and everything. You're watching Pumped. Welcome back to Pumped. We're headed to Texas. I have no animosity against the girl that hit us. I believe everything happens for a very specific reason. We were heading out to go eat, and literally a block from the house, a girl was texting and driving and didn't see us. I actually knew as soon as I rolled over off the bike and saw my leg like that, I knew it was gone. When I woke up at 2 a.m. in ICU, the first thing the nurse said is, oh good, you're awake. We want to tell you that you're four weeks pregnant. It started very simple. I set two goals. That was to walk before the baby and to run before the baby. I just wanted to chase my kid and play with her like a normal mom. After that, it was, well, I did that. What else can I do? I found I'm really bad at sticking to one thing, <laughs> which is why I do so many different sports. I can't sit there and focus on one thing, so I use that to my advantage. Hi, I'm Caitlin Connor. I am the adaptive advocate, mom, athlete, model, whatever you want to call me. No, I never imagined I would be a competitive athlete at all. <laughs> um, I was definitely the kid in school that got hit with every single ball we played with in the face. So <laughs> it literally took me losing my leg so when you go, why not? Why not live your days the way you want to? It started very simple. I set two goals, and that was to walk before the baby and to run before the baby. I just wanted to chase my kid and play with her like a normal mom. After that, it was, well, I did that. What else can I do? My prosthetic company said, oh, have you heard of the Challenge Athletes Foundation? They offer grants for a running prosthesis. So I decided to sign up for this grant, and it changed my life. May of 2017, I completed my first full triathlon. Um, and then after that, I completed six more within the same year. I received the national title for the Flying 200 for track cycling. I did the first Para Elite Spartan race and our team won first place. I'm currently trying to achieve the goal of being the first female adaptive speed skater in the world, became the first female MT boxer in the US, second in the world. Basically, if it's out there, I've probably tried it or want to try it. I've started using myself as a way to advocate and get modeling to be more friendly to the adaptive community. I like to say, even if the door is closed, I'll open up the windows, I'll, I'll find a new way, I'll break down the door if I have to make the opportunity to pop up. My daughter's name is Tinley, and um, she will be four this year. She, from the very beginning, has been with me and, and done all these things and come to my practice and seen me train. Her seeing me do all this is the best way for her to understand that she can go out and do whatever she wants. I believe everything happens for a very specific reason, and you don't know what that reason is until sometimes many years down the road. And if I hadn't gone through it, I wouldn't be where I'm at today at all. So if you want it to happen, just go out there and start making it happen. Coming up. Dance Floor Sculpt is a beat-based workout where Natalie and I both co-teach. There's a low impact and a high impact version of everything that we do. And later. This is really the basics of tango. And so you do simple moves, changing directions, rocking, walking. Today we will have a theme for changing directions. You're watching Pumped. Welcome back to Pumped. We're headed to New York City. I'm Elizabeth. And I'm Dale. And we run the account Sweats in the City on Instagram. Today we're here at Project by Equinox, which is Equinox Boutique Studio. They bring amazing instructors here. We've never had one we don't like. And they teach really different, cool sculpting classes. A lot of them have cardio in them. The space is beautiful. It's just a good vibe here. 
We are all about community at City Fit Life and that is something that the project really embraces. Bringing in the different trainers, different ideas for classes and it kind of envelops everybody into one uh, and creates a space where you can try just about anything and everything all in one place. Dance Floor Sculpt is a beat-based workout where Natalie and I both co-teach. There's a low impact and a high impact version of everything that we do. We keep the heart rate up the entire class and it's a full body workout. Good? Starting my day, especially with a workout, it's an hour to myself, clear my mind, feel good in my body. Working out should never be a punishment. Like if you ate really bad the day before, you shouldn't be going hard into berries because you feel like your body deserves that. We really do it to uplift ourselves and just take time to take care of our bodies. We created the Instagram and blog hand in hand, but it really started as more of like a class review where we were going to different studios and just exclusively reviewing from a very raw standpoint as to like, can you shower there? Should I bring my own products? You know, things that like, especially girls want to know and that it's not necessarily out there. We wanted to just have a platform for people to talk about it from an unbiased perspective. Most fitness accounts on Instagram were like instructors or personal trainers. And now we're kind of noticing this wave of more people like us who are going about their normal everyday lives but also want to incorporate fitness. Social influencers are really important for us in the fitness world. They get to come in here and experience, tell all their followers about what they are going through, what the class is like, and it just brings awareness to the whole fitness community. I would say our followers really motivate us. They're so curious about everything, whether it's what you're eating, what you're wearing, who makes your shoes. So that's kind of how we developed more of like an athleisure, beauty. Um, yeah, exactly. Once you put yourself out there, you gotta keep it consistent. Our followers, you know, they want information. You know, when you're doing this as your full-time job and you're out there reviewing stuff, you gotta just give that fresh content and make sure you're staying on top of it, staying on the pulse of, you know, trying the newest class because they're coming to us and they're relying on us to to, you know, give that information to them. Such a new space that a lot of us, you know, we're not sure what we're getting into and just to discuss with each other, just so we know, you know, we're all on the same page and we can see each other at events, invite each other to different events, so it's, it's pretty great. We really want to turn Sweats the City into a brand where women and men can go to learn about boutique fitness and health and grow up from there. Yes, we got that warm up going, get that blood circling, get that body moving, let's get it. My weight loss journey has been my entire life. It's been a lifestyle change. It's been a mission. Go, one. Get it. There's days when I don't feel like getting up, there's days when I don't wanna work out, but when you're held accountable and you got three other people in your ear saying you could do this, you got this, it's just amazing, like it really is. You know, because they, we, we on this journey together. Four young, beautiful African American women just killing these pounds. Yeah. Killing these pounds, killing these pounds. From May to August, I've lost 12 pounds. I've been down like 18 pounds. Dropped 20 pounds. From May till now, 25 pounds. Okay. Keep it pumped up. We ain't losing this weight staying here being oh, okay. cute. Okay. The goals are slightly different, but the journey remains the same. We're all just trying to be healthy and just strive for something greater. Whew. Two. Oh, you better believe it, honey, because I have always known that I was beautiful. That's five. So what I say to all the women out there, you are beautiful, but if you feel like you're not, try eating something different and murder the scale. You know, you look good, you feel good. You feel good, you look good. Twist that knob, open that door up to your new beginnings, yes. It's not just about losing weight, it's also about getting mentally strong. I suffer from depression and anxiety at times, and it was a lot to get the support from my girlfriends. I always yeah. love myself, but I feel like maybe I didn't believe it, and um, now I believe it. Yeah, you get it. <laughs> Coming up, I teach people in classes like the one we're gonna have tonight how to communicate with the body language. You're watching Pumped. Welcome back to Pumped. You don't need an Argentinian passport to dance tango. The music is the universal language. From the streets of Buenos Aires, Argentina, to Princeton, New Jersey, this group of tangueros is dancing to the passionate and romantic beats of tango with the help of Michael Natochi, a professional dance instructor with more than two decades of tango experience. A lot of the fundamentals involve 
walking, walking to the beat. And walking is quite natural. Walking with the other person is a little bit more challenging. So to coordinate two bodies walking to the beat of tango, this is really the basics of tango. And so you do simple moves, changing directions, rocking, walking. Today we will have a theme for changing directions and you will see how we handle this information in layers. So I start with a more basic layer that anybody can get and then make it a little more challenging for those who already dance for. There are people that dance five, six, seven years here, so I want to make sure that they also get something out of the class. Usually when you start to learn tango, you learn to walk. I'll try and show you. Keep your head, this part of the body is, this part of the body is straight. See, I keep this part of the body straight. So it has to be, there's no, no, no You're not going like that. Well, you'll see people who do that sort of stuff as well. No, but that's, that's not the Argentinian tango. I'm not Argentinian, and actually, uh, tonight you will not see too many Argentinian dancers here. However, my first teacher, who was a world known star of forever tango, his name was Carlos Gavito, who, he used to say that you don't need an Argentinian passport to dance tango. The music is the universal language. Argentine tango has music that is very passionate and you develop a connection with the person you're dancing with. You may not know them, you may not even know their name, but you get in their embrace and you feel the music and it's just magical. And for three minutes you're in love and then you say goodbye. <laughs> I teach people in classes like the one we're going to have tonight how to communicate with the body language, with the language of tango and how to listen to the music and how to put these pieces of the puzzle together, the music and the partnership and the feeling that they have, the feeling that the music evokes in you. And that's uh, what I've been doing ever since for the last, uh, I would say, 15 plus years. See? Again, watch slow motion. Yum, bam, bam. Have a favorite spot to get pumped? Tell us on social media.